that I'm trying to uh, avoid getting killed by whatever happens to be in the way. Kirby likes dingus. Great. All right, stopping. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to MMO Anthropology, and I'm bringing you into Arctic Combat, a new free-to-play first-person shooter by WebZen. As soon as it manages to load, that is. I'm bringing you into this because I haven't actually introduced any first-person shooters to my audience, and they're a very important portion of the MMO and even online play markets. As you can see, there's a lot of shooting going on, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me through all of this. Uh, the green, or the blue, the cyan are my teammates. When it comes to game playing and the anthropology of gaming, one could point out that a lot of sports and video games in general, at least... Ah! Of course I was just cut down because I wasn't paying attention. As you all know, I actually play the games while I'm trying to describe them and uh, talk about their... Oh, great. An enemy helicopter. Which means that I'm literally a combat anthropologist, or at least an anthropologist at arms, virtually. I'm trying not to be totally useless to my team, but the truth is, as long as that helicopter's out there, you can kind of see it on the edge of the map. It will probably blow me down if I run across it guy over the nope just like that video games and uh, competitive games in general and in, in often are a proxy for war or at least use warfare as their cultural collateral this is because the warfare is well known to our well to people in general and the rules that guide it are easily coded into games we have equipment we have uh, people we have the concept of guns, the uh, and the physics of warfare already in place. And, ah, he killed me before. And as a result, it makes it really easy for us to uh, bear into this cultural collateral. As you can see, this is not generally my type of game. This sort of cultural collateral is used by video game makers. Ah! Ah, apparently you can get uh, experience by dying 25 times. That's going to be easy for me. Because of this particular cultural collateral and I... Whoa, helicopter. And I mean that because... We have it in our media, it's going on in the world right now. Uh, people have fought wars throughout time, and, of course, the rules of warfare are fairly discreet, and they're easily programmable into uh, competitive gaming. In fact, warfare itself is highly competitive. And we, as you can see here, a lot of what's going on in this game is developed around all of the precepts of warfare. We're running around with guns, although tiny map, probably not the case in a lot of even modern engagements. I wonder what that is. Oh, I guess we were having something very large dropped on us. As a result, these sort of games are presented as a way for people to engage one another in a context that is outside of themselves. For example, uh, many of us will never see warfare or war in general. Uh, I'm not a soldier. I know very, very few. Probably many of the people here playing the video game along with me aren't. And so instead, we're thrusting ourselves into the context of warfare, which is something we all understand because it surrounded our world. We've gone through World War II, World War I, we have things going on right now in Iraq, we have Afghanistan, we have this huge macho culture 
about shows that surround what happens to people when they go to war. We have an idolization of soldiers, and not only that, it promotes a perfect uh, genre for our fiction, for what we watch in our media, for what we find heroic. And so if we can take a little bit of that and uh, find a, uh, in, a sort of escapism in video games, but at the same time taking the uh, adversarial conflict, we can build two teams, you know, like the, the, the winners in this ca case are the Americans and the losers my side would have been the RSA, who are, I believe are the Russians. I picked the, the snowy map because it's from the Arctic combat term of the game, which is essentially that the world is running out of oil. There's another theme, but there's, you know, pockets of it still in the Antarctic that everyone wants to use, and so the conflict o is over resources. The game itself then presents, um... Well, thank you. The game then presents itself as... Let me get out of this. The game then gives us a chance to actually present ourselves in the roles of, you know, these warriors. Uh, these people who are fighting these conflicts across, you know, frozen ground over, you know, for their nations, for their people. And we do so without the danger of actually presenting ourselves in, in, in combat. Uh, we don't have to worry about bullets blowing our arms off. Um, headshots, while gruesome, aren't actually killing another person. They just respond. So the rules of virtual warfare are quite different from the rules of actual warfare. We, um, we can also collapse the rules of the game into specific ways of presenting the battlefield. For example, as I was running around, I could fall down on the ground in a prone position to make myself harder to hit. I could uh, carefully use the edge of walls to make it more difficult to see me or my little red name popping up and shoot me. All of these things are I see uh, constantly when I watch players who play games like Call of Duty and Modern Warfare 3 who are essentially gaming the way that the system itself, the way that the game's virtual presentation um, uh, presents itself to them. And this, in many ways, pr uh, presents a uh, development in the way that gamers approach the game. There's those who love to rush in and just shoot people. There's those who hide behind with sniper rifles and stay in one place and try to sneak out of windows and catch people off guard. And then there's the people who look for ways to move around the map unseen and shoot people around corners or over boxes or get up on buildings. And of course, as you can see, Arctic Combat is taking a lot of this from games like Call of Duty by throwing in the attack helicopter. Something you didn't see was there was a UAV which shows up everyone on the map. It's generally up in that corner. Um, I don't play these games very often, so of course I'm going to be... Uh, at a grave disadvantage, but uh, I do watch them a lot, and uh, I enjoy watching people clash in them, especially when one team or the other has members who are sp particularly skilled at analyzing the battlefield and using it to their advantage in the ways that I described uh, before. Well, uh, this, is cu this game is currently in closed beta. It's by WebZen, and like I said, it's very similar to Call of Duty. However, uh, the graphics aren't really quite at the same par, but so far it has it's taking many of the lessons that Call of Duty and other games similar to it have taken. So I'm wondering if you're going to be out there in the free-to-play uh, market, this is probably a game that you'd be interested in. And if the rest of you, if any of you play Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, or other first-person shooters, I'd love to hear from you in what you look for in a first-person shooter game, and if this uh, looks like it might manage to, uh, well, tickle your fancy. Meanwhile, this has been another MMO Anthropology, and signing off, good night, and good dreams.